I don't need to be hopeless when God is my hope. I don't need to be weak-minded when God tells me to have the mind of Christ. When God tells me to pray, I don't need to uh, uh, back down from that. When God tells me to give, I don't need to be timid when it comes to giving. When God tells me to tell some witness or tell others about his saving power, I don't need to be timid when it comes to that. I don't need to have, operate in fear when it comes to carrying out the will of God. Hello, everyone. My name is Richard Dobbs. I'm pastor of Overcomers Christian Center. Thank you for allowing us to share the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you're ever in the Villarica area, come see us on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock a.m. I believe that, that that service will be a blessing into your life. Well, today I'm going to come to you from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 7, which reads as follows. For God has has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Based on that, I want to talk to you about from this topic, what has God given me? That's right. What has God given me? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we appreciate you so much, Father. We appreciate your love. We appreciate your mercy and your grace. We ask you to forgive us, Father, for everything we've done wrong. And we pray as we get into the word of God that you will bless your people today, God. Empower and equip us, Father. God, continue to do it exceedingly abundantly above anything we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Thank you, God, that our cups run over, Father. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Thank you, Father, for helping us to be overcomers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. A sound mind is important because fear is an enemy of a sound mind. And we have to know what the word says about our mind. Also, what has God given us and what he has not given us. And what we understand from 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 is this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. First thing I want us to recognize, God has not given us fear. He has not given us timid ways. He, he, he does not give us the trait of being a coward, a hopeless, or to be weak-minded. And one of the emphasis I want us to understand is that fear comes in this particular case for us not to carry out the will of God. See, I don't need to be timid when it comes to obeying the word of God. I don't need to be a coward when it comes to when it, God tells me to do something. I don't need to be hopeless when God is my hope. I don't need to be weak-minded when God tells me to have the mind of Christ. When God tells me to pray, I don't need to uh, uh, back down from that. When God tells me to give, I don't need to be timid when it comes to giving. When God tells me to tell some witness or tell others about his saving power, I don't need to be timid when it comes to that. I don't need to have operate in fear when it comes to carrying out the will of God. I can be brave in other areas, but when it comes to carrying out the will of God, God has not given us a spirit of fear. What has he given us, Pastor Dobbs? I'm glad you asked. The Lord has given us three powerful traits that will cause an inward dramatic shift in our lives. Traits that will cause a renovation, a rebuilding, a restoring in our marriages with our children and our relationships and our finances and our church life and our business and so forth. Traits that will change 
speech, how we think, how we talk, and how we make decisions. Traits that would transform and make our lives better. The first trait that Paul gives us in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, God gives us power. He gives us strength. He gives us ability. Why? To carry out the will of God. Can you imagine when Jesus was on his way to Golgotha and he says, not my will, but your will be done. Can you imagine the strength that it took in order to get to that cross? Well, God gives us strength. He gives us power. He gives us ability to carry out his will here on the earth. See, God is all knowing, all powerful. He's unlimited in resources, but he places his Holy Spirit in our lives, which is the power source. When we allow him to lead us, allow him to guide us, allow him to influence us, and we obey that command, we can have his power operating in us. We can have access to his strength and his ability to carry out the will of God for our our life. Listen, we have access to his strength and his power and his ability to carry out his will despite trouble, trials, and tribulations. That's right, the terrible threes. Tr trouble, trials, and tribulation. I tell you, God knows how to help us when we're dealing with trouble, when we're dealing with trials, and we're still dealing with tribulations. And I know something about God. God will bless you in the midst of your trouble. God God can bless you in the middle of your trial and God can bless you in the middle of your tribulation. That's a powerful God right there. He's not allowing the circumstances to change his will from being done in our lives, but it's up to us to choose his power or to rely on our own power. Our power is limited. Our power does not have the resources that God does. And God is an unlimited God with unlimited resources resources and unlimited power. So we want to stick with his power. I like what they said in Isaiah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Hallelujah. They shall run. Hallelujah. But one thing I like about that scripture, we're taking on the power of God. Glory be to God. Isaiah 40 and 31. The second trait we want to talk about here is love. Love is affection. Love is goodwill. Love says, I have your best interest at heart. And see, God has has our best interest in mind. You know, when God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He had our best interest at heart. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Listen, he had our best interest at heart. He proved it. He proved it back on the cross at Calvary. He he conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered the grave so that we can be reconciled back to him. See, God is love. He teaches us in his word an example of how to love. And the more we walk with him, the more we submit to his will and his way, the more we move forward, the more we grow in his spirit, the more we mature in his love, we can operate in his power, which is is his love. I like what Galatians 5 and 16 says. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, when we conduct our lives by the Holy Spirit, when we allow the Holy Spirit to regulate our lives, when we allow the spirit of God to cause us to progress and move forward, we shall not fulfill the lust or the desires of the flesh. Because the flesh goes in, in the opposite of what the will of God is for our lives. And as we conduct our lives by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we can operate in his love. His love is powerful. Not my love, but his love. See, my love, my love is wishy-washy. Here today, gone tomorrow. But God's love is eternal. It's everlasting. God loves you. He loved you while you was a sinner. So you know he loves you now. Hallelujah to God. 
And the third trait that God gives us is a sound mind, which means self-control and moderation. A sound mind is essential and valuable in this life we're living in. A mind that has, that has self-control, a disciplined mind. I was thinking about sometimes how the phone can try to distract you and take you away. The television can try to distract you and take you away. But God gives us a sound mind, a disciplined mind, a mind that understands moderation, self-restraint, and self-discipline. And as spirit-led saints, I must choose to allow the Spirit of God to renew my mind with the Word of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit so that I can be a spirit-led saint, a mature saint. I must choose to choose what Romans 8 and 14 tells us here. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Oh, thank God he, we, we, he leads us. He guides us. He na- helps us navigate our lives, not by what we want, but by the Holy Spirit's will for our life. And when we do that, we are sons of God. We're maturing in the word of God and in the ways of God. So what has God given me? I'm glad you asked. He's given us power. He's given us love and he's given us a sound mind. One more time. What has God given us? He's given us power. He's given us love and he's given us a sound mind. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for giving us power, love, and a sound mind. Father, thank you for helping us because you knew we needed it. And Father, I know you have not given us a spirit of fear. Thank you for not giving us fear. But God, thank you for power, love, and a sound mind. So in turn, we can carry out the will of God for our lives. Thank you, God for allowing us to to receive your power, to receive your love, to receive a sound mind, not just in actions, but in deeds, Father. Father, we're so grateful to you, God. So grateful to you, Jesus. And we pray for the individuals who are listening or watching, God. I pray that they receive power, love and a sound mind, God, in order to carry out the will of God for their life. And as we do, God, I pray that you'll continue to prosper us, continue to make us better. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Well, thank you for allowing us to come to wherever you are to share the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you're ever in the Billerica area, come see us, amen, on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock a.m., Wednesday evenings at 7. I know you'll be blessed by the service. Well, till next time, remember, without division, the people perish.